So I just, I'm just going to wait for it to actually come up and say recording. That's it. Okay. Katrina, do you just want to introduce Kat again very quickly for the yeah. recording? Hello. So um, welcome to Kat Eagle and Rob Jennings from the Discalculia Network. They have got an amazing Facebook site, haven't you? Amazing um, uh, number of members who've joined and uh, it's a really good portal, isn't it, for people who want to interact with each other around this, this area. So over to you, um, Kat. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, I'm Cathy from the Discalculia Network. Um, Rob and I set up the Discalculia Network in 2019 um, to help raise awareness of Discalculia because we feel it's not talked about enough um, and to help those with Discalculia and maths difficulties and support the teachers and parents supporting those people. Um, and today, um, Rob and I are going to talk about games based learning, which is interesting as Steve just mentioned it. Um, in regards to Ofsted, so we'll we'll see what everyone thinks. So I love games-based learning. I think it's amazing. But I think before we talk about why I think it's amazing, the most important thing to talk about first is when it isn't useful. Um, and it isn't useful when the objective of the game is outside of the learner's current knowledge and understanding, when the game is not tailored to their needs, basically. Um, and I think we have to be really careful not to assume any past knowledge or skills. Um, a game like Snakes and Ladders played by a family might cause one child a lot of distress because they can't yet subitize, so they don't know what dice the dice pattern is without counting it, so they're slow to pay. They might not even be able to count the numbers or know which way the board goes, which number comes next. So we do have to be very careful about thinking about the games we choose. But if we choose carefully and wisely, I think there's a real lot of benefits of games-based learning um, for children and to use it to reinforce learning. Um, so first of all, I think the learner often doesn't realise they're learning. When we're playing a game to reinforce a skill, the child doesn't necessarily know we're doing it. This is a really fun game. I love these splat sticks. Um, not so great with the whole class, I found, but good for a couple of children. Um, this is a simple game where you throw the dice and you have to splat the multiple of five um, that you've got. So here, the child splatted the three times five um, was 15 before I got my purple splatter in place. Um, the child is engaged in the learning, they don't necessarily realise they're learning. Um, I find children are really productive when they're playing games. Um, they tend to get a lot more practice done than they would if you just gave them a worksheet of questions to do. Um, and they really enjoy that process. For me, the most useful part about games, I find, is the learner is constantly having to make sense of number. If we're playing a round style game, I nearly always say to my pupil, oh, you decide who wins the first round. Why is that person one? So is it because they got the biggest number, the smallest number and so on? So there's a lot of opportunity to compare number, order, sequence number outside of maybe the main objective of the game even. This is something I feel very, very strongly about, um, which is learners talking about their learning, verbalising their thinking. And as adults in this field, we have to verbalise our thinking to help them know how to verbalise theirs. Um, so while we're playing games, I find it a really good opportunity because the child is relaxed to say, oh, I worked out this by doing this. What did you do? And have a little chat. And I think that's a really good opportunity. Here, this little girl is playing a game where you have to throw three dice and work out um, an answer using any um, uh, add, subtract, times or divide. Um, and you can place your counter anywhere on the board and you have to get um, four in a row. That's encouraging lots of other skills as well, of course. Um, I find games can be used to both reinforce a skill or to extend a skill. So this is a four in a row times table game. It's available to download on our um, blog section of our website. Um, and this was after a child had done twos, fives and tens times tables. They'd done them separately, but we hadn't put them together yet. So this was a slight extension on what they'd done, but not too much. Um, and again, it re relieves the pressure of lots and lots of written practice. This is four in a row game, so the person says their answer out loud. I find generally children are less likely to give up when they're playing games. Um, this is actually one of my pupils who absolutely loved this magnetic game for matching dice patterns to numbers. It was some of the very early work we, we did together. 
Um, and even with learners with ADHD, and obviously we know there's lots of comorbidity between, it's not a child is quite likely not just to present with dyscalculia or mass difficulty, um, but I find these learners are often more focused when they're playing um, this type of game. Um, you can see he's really, really got his um, eyes on that to try and make it work. I also think games can be more easily differentiated than you might think. Um, this is a division game we posted on our site recently, but lots of um, lots of games like spinner game and dice games, it's really easy to differentiate for a whole class, not just if you're one to one. So, for example, with a spinner game, you could have a spinner that's got times and divide by 10 on it. Another spinner that's got times and divide by 10 and 100. Another spinner that's got times and divide by 10, 100 and 1000. Equally, you could just do times by 10. All the children in class could have a, a, a spinner with a partner. They wouldn't necessarily even realise they had a different spinner to somebody else. They could have different dice. Some children could have decimal dice. Some people could have whole number dice. You've got lots of options of ways to differentiate games to suit the need of the pupils. Um, I, I really find, and this is a difficult one, because obviously children need to learn, learn to lose as well as win, and you have to pick your moments. But I think that a lot of people feel, a lot of children feel, that if they're winning, that they're good at something. They equate winning with being good. If I win the race at school, that means I'm good at running. So when the pupils win the games, they very much feel like they've got a positive outcome. They feel successful, especially if it happens to be with a teacher or parent that they can be. The number of times, honestly, the grins on my pupils' faces when they beat me at a game, they're like, we beat the maths teacher. They just love it. Um, you do need a little bit of sleight of hand, though, um, here and there to help with that. <laughs> Make sure that you uh, accidentally do sometimes. Um, also, when learners play together, they naturally peer review each other's work. And obviously, again, this depends on the group, so you have to pick your groups carefully. Um, but they, again, talk about what they've done. What's your answer? They will self-correct um, or enc encourage others to correct if things aren't quite right because they like fairness, generally. There's also quite instant feedback and in the world of online games and so on, children um, like feedback. Um, and when we're playing, for example, this area Tetris game, um, then the child is thinking all the time, well, is my area bigger or smaller? Again, we're using our number sense. How, what size can I fit into there? Um, but they're also comparing with me. So they're getting that feedback of, am I likely to win or is the other person likely to win? I also find I do a lot of my informal assessment through a game because we might have been using lots of hands on equipment to work on something. Um, and then I am using game to, to see how they're approaching that. Do they need the hands on equipment to do the game? Have they passed on to that? Are they drawing a picture along with the game to help them? Um, and how are they doing with that? This was taken by one of my um, my client's um, mum when she had just um, beaten me at a game and that grin says it all really. I really feel that games reduce maths anxiety um, for most children. Um, they really make them feel like they're um, relaxed and it doesn't seem like maths. Um, now I promise my pupil did actually look like that at the start of the lesson. Um, but um, this is really honestly how I see things change with a pupil when we play lots of games and we keep the situation very relaxed and hands on. I see very nervous, anxious pupils who are, who are scared of maths, I'm tearing their hair out, sometimes literally, unfortunately, who then become really concentrated and interested in their work and feel more at ease and engaged. Um, and this morning I had a pupil first thing and I said to him, we just finished a game and I said to him, why do you think we play games? And he said, Oh, I'm having so much fun this morning and I know we're learning. So I think that's a really good point to make that um, the children do know um, that they're learning too. So over to you, Rob. Hi, Rob, are you there? Rob, I think you might need to unmute yourself. 
I can see your screen, but we can't hear you. So it's probably on your other screen, Rob. I can't. I can't. Uh, um... How's that? That's yeah. better. There we go. We can hear you and we can see you now. There we go, Rob. <laughs> OK. So that's good. Uh, thank you, Kat. Are, you, are we recording now? Yeah, we're all good, good to go. Carry on. It's fine. Okay. Um, I've chosen two games to demo today because uh, they're very simple and easy to play. They're brilliant for consolidating and encouraging a deeper understanding of some key maths concepts. But also, my pupils love the competitive nature. As, as Kat said, to beat the teacher is like a real achievement, and they love to do that often. Um, it's also important, as Kat mentioned before, is to choose the right game for the right learner. The last thing we want to do is, is to generate maths anxiety and to lead that pupil to disengage in any future learning. So my, one of my first games I've chosen today is something called Card Wars. See if I can get. Yeah, here we go. I like to give my games exciting titles. Here we have Card Wars. But I also like to give ownership back to whoever I'm playing with so that they so they gain a, a real sort of, oh, this is my game. Can we play my game? And they really sort of get into that. So here we have Bob's Card Wars. Simple game, really. Um, you take a normal pack of cards, you remove all of the pictures, and then we deal two cards to each player. We get the pupil to then arrange the cards in order of the highest value first, and then the second one with the lower value second. We get then the pupil to verbalize what they can see in front of them. So here for player one, we have seven, take away four. When they, uh, we ask them then to sort of work out what the answer is gonna be for that question. And I always make a note at that time. How did you how did you do that? What how did you take away four from seven? Because if they're counting in ones or in uh, inefficient inefficient way of doing that calculation, I make a note. Next lesson subtraction techniques. Here in the game, the winner of the cards is the one with the lowest answer. Sorry, the one with the uh, highest answer. And then they take those cards and put them on a pile in front of them. You go through the whole pack. And at the end of the pack, when all the packs used up, you then have a pile of cards in front of you. And we get them to sort of count up how many cards they have. And the one, the one with the highest number of cards is the ultimate winner. So a great simple game it can be used for both addition and subtraction. It helps to understand highest and lowest values. It's also a good way of practicing counting skills. That card wars. My second game, let's see if I can find it here, is called Race to 20. Again, you can adapt this game for any learner. Uh, for example, you could be Race to 10 by folding in half. Again, a really, really simple game. Each player rolls uh, a normal six-sided dice, and they note down on their track the number value from each throw. I ask them to read and record each throw so we know where they've got to on the track. Here you can see player one has thrown a six, and he's, he, he records six on the track. We then get them to repeat each throw so that, uh, for example, the next one, the player one can throw a number five. And then we move up accordingly. But it's really important when you're playing any games to ask lots of questions. So, for example, for player one, how many do I need to get to 10? So they can count up, they can work it out, they might know it. So they can see what this is consolidating and working on the number bonds for 10. So number the player one is just throwing a five. So we can then practice early uh, identification of what makes a five, because I can split a five into four plus one. 
So then it, this is an introduction to early bridging techniques to the nearest 10. So if I add five here, let's see if I can do this. So I'm going to add five. So one, two, there's my four to get to 10, plus one more. So my score becomes 11. It's going to be a big splodge 11, but there you go. And, and then so on. The winner of the game is the first one to get to 20. Again, it's lots of uh, ways of how to make 10. It's really good number ones practice. You can introduce different languages in this sort of games as well. What's the difference in scores between player three, the pink, and player two, the red? It's really important to sort of, you know, introduce a different language. Perhaps there's so many different terms that mean the same thing. So the first one to get to 20 is the winner. Uh, I'm Rob Jennings from the Dyscalculia Network. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our thoughts on the importance of maths games to their learning. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Robert. That was fantastic. And, and uh, you know, the, the names you gave those games were, were really uh, exciting, I think, and you'd make you want to play them. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Rob will give out any details for the Dyscalculia Network if you're not a member. So we're going to have a, a, a break now. Um, I know Mahesh is, is ready and waiting to, to start, but we're going to have a, a break for lunch and come back at 1.15 for Mahesh. Are there any questions uh, before we go to lunch uh, from anything that uh, this morning? Um, we'd be happy to answer anything. If you want to put anything in, uh, in the... Um in the chat box so there is one in the chat box that says rob are there any game ideas on on the website so is there any on the on the discalculia website yes discalculia um, network website yes we've got in the blog section there's lots of um, uh, games on there where and they're free to download mm -hmm. there's also lots of information it depends on the topic so last month we did a, a whole view on times tables and there's lots of times tables games associated with that if if they fail to uh, find anything that's their interest, if they can email us, and we'll get back to them shortly with some suggestions. Cat has just Cat has just shared uh, the the link on the chat, right. so that's very good. Uh, uh, so Daniel, say great stuff with the cards. We use a lot a lot in school, and we'll definitely use uh, this card. It is uh, um, now. Uh, Steve has put his hand yes. up. <laughs> Uh, so, so I think uh, Steve can unmute himself because he's still a presenter. So if you want to unmute yourself, Steve, and ask the question, by all means, please do so. Yeah, just wanted to say that, um, love, thank you very much, Kat, and thank you, Rob, because it's a lovely demonstration of it isn't what you do, it's the way that you do it. And your particular games, um, and you have to bear in mind that the quote came from Ofsted, and my quote was, you don't always believe the experts because uh, they're not always right. And those games are, with uh, particularly um, the ones with the cards, where you could see the four related to the uh, nine. Just lovely, you know. Uh, so it's, again, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. And the, the nice mass results behind that. So thank you very much. And don't uh, don't ban all games from your teaching, because that would be uh, counterproductive. No. Okay, no. I think Mahesh, Mahesh wants to say something as well. I think. Did he? I, think, I don't. I think he needs to meet yourself. The math mathematics for all website. There is a post called prerequisite skills and how to develop them, and a list of games and toys and actually there is a series called number war games which takes from number concept to algebraic operations and uh, people will find that useful that's brilliant yeah that's very useful thank you very much so i think if we break for lunch now katrina yes. uh, uh, i will share the screen uh, we'll leave teams on we'll keep ourselves muted our cameras off you can either leave the teams call if you want to you can stay in, you can chat in the chat box by all means uh, i'm going to stop the recording now and i will uh, and we'll be back at uh, 